Guys, my name is John Hamilton and today I'm going to be teaching you how to set up this fly cam. So as you can see, you can fly around and you can shift and space to go up and down. You can fly back and forth and you can collision with that. But I'm going to teach you how you can go make your play, um, camera only be able to go through that or not be able to go through it. Alright, and I just wanted to mention that I have a new website, blenderreel.com, which you can go check out. Um... And also, if you want to subscribe here as well, you can get updated straight on YouTube. So, let's get into it, and let's learn how to do this. Alright, so as you can see, we are in Blender Game, GXL, and we're in Textured Mode here. And just got I've just added this plane. Alright, so we're going to come over here to Game Logic, and we want to select the camera. Because we're going to be adding some logic to it. So, if we come here, and we're going to maximize this, so everyone can see... Alright, so what we're going to do is we are going to add a mouse sensor. So, we're going to change this to movement. So, what this is going to do is this is going to be activating our mouse look actuator. Um, why we're we using mouse and why is it on movement? Well, it works a lot better. There is a technique, you can use an always sensor and then put it to true level triggering. But myself, I just prefer this way, and it just works. So we want to add a um, a mouse actuator. So if we come down here, and we select mouse right here, and if we set this, and if we change the mode here to look, you get all these settings. So we can leave those settings the same. We just want to connect these together, and we want to close it. All right. So if I minimize that again. What you'll see is we can look around with our camera. Let's change this to detection mode. As you can see, we can look around with our camera and everything's working. All right, so now we want to be able to fly our camera around. So if I make this big again, we want to be able to click W, A, and D and be able to fly it around and so on. All right, so we're going to start off by adding a keyboard actuator. And this is going to be the input, so if we hit W, and then we are going to run a motion actuator. So, it's right here, motion. <laughs> so, if you look at the camera, if we were to go here, and we were to go Alt-R, the, the, I guess, the what this front bit of the camera is pointing down. So if we wanted to fly it around, we'd want this to be the minus Z direction. So minus point 0.1. Alright, so as you can see there, uh, we can fly forward. Alright, so that is not working because we did not connect it up. So if we connect that up and then look around, you can see we can fly forward line for it. Alright, so if we were to just do this over and over again, so if we were to add a keyboard, keyboard, and a keyboard, and this one's to be S, and A, sorry, yep, A, A, and we'll just name this one S as well, so if we were to close those all up, S, oh, D, sorry, D, alright, and so D, did I select, yep. Alright, so we're gonna, just going to add a bunch more motions, three to be exact, so motion, motion, and another motion, and this motion is going to be point 0.1 on the Z axis, so if we connect this up, and this is going to be, um, well, this direction is D, so, we are going to be pressing A, so we want this to be minus, minus 0.1x in the x-axis. And if we connect that up, and, and then we were to last of all connect this last one up, we see is if we go 0.1 on the x-axis, we can fly around, left, right, back, forward. Now, if you want to be able to fly up and down, you can quickly add that. Just by coming here and adding a couple more. So, you could add a space for going up and a shift for going down. 
and if we were to add two more motion sensors, this will give you the up and down motion. All right, so you want to select the Y axis because if you're flying this around, that's going to kind of be the down axis. Now, you would select that, but what you want to do is you want to disable these local settings. Which means it doesn't matter what direction we're pointing and it's going to make it fly up or down. So if you disable those local settings, what you'll see is if we go on the um, what's it, space bar, we want to go point 0.1 in the Z direction and minus point 0.1. And what you see, um, for the bottom one, sorry, what you see is we can fly around, as you can see, fly around, we can go up, we can go down, it doesn't matter where we're pointing, it's always going to fly like that. So as you can see, um, as you can see, we can fly around, we can, right, so now if you want your camera to be out of to collision with this object, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add a, a change of physics settings to dynamic. Now, one thing to note about this is that it doesn't work perfectly. You can see the camera falling a little bit, but um, I guess if you want this, it kind of works. So if we were to change this to a sphere, and you would come here and you would turn on the dampening to full, right there, dampening to full, turn off the mass, and pretty much everything else here is good. What you see is you can, oh, as you can see, you can see that little bit of falling, but if we come here, as you can see, we can't go below the object. Um, I mean, you do get that bit of a falling motion, but It works. So that is how you set that up. Um, I'm sure it'll be pretty useful for anyone that's just trying to test out their game and they're not trying to set up like a huge player rig or something. This is pretty good for just flying around and testing out your game. So one thing like before we leave is if you want, if you think this looks a bit too zoomed in, you can just change your field of view to something like 20 or 15 and I find that um, especially for first person shooters that just makes it feel a lot better and not so cramped so see you next week and yeah